In Excel 2010, there is a new function called the aggregate function. This function is similar to the subtotal function, except the aggregate function has 19 functions, whereas subtotal only has 11, and the aggregate function has the ability to ignore or not ignore hidden rows, filtered rows, and or error cells. Let's look at what happens if we try to do the regular average function on the data that I have over on the left-hand side. So I'll do average, and I'll select the range. Because there's the divide by zero error in that column, the average will give me that divide by zero as the result. Also, the average function is including the hidden rows that I have within my data. So I do have some hidden rows 8 through 11. I could use the subtotal function or I could use the aggregate function. So I'm going to delete the average that I put in there, and I'm going to start with the equal sign and start typing aggregate. As soon as I see it in the list, I can double click on it. The first argument of the aggregate function is to figure out which of the functions available do I want to use. With a subtotal, you only have the first 11. But as I scroll down, I can see that I have median, large, mode, percentiles for inclusive and exclusive, and quartile as well. So I've got 19 functions with the aggregate. I'm going to choose average by double clicking on average, and it will put a one, and then I'm going to hit the comma. The second argument is going to give me options. I could ignore any of these or ignore none. So you'll notice number four is to ignore nothing. So that would include the errors that I have and the hidden rows. I would like to ignore the hidden rows and the errors. So I'll double click on number seven and then a comma. We have two possibilities and some of the aggregate functions are array functions. And we'll come back and talk about large and small but we're just going to use the range that we have here from H2 down to H24. And then I can go ahead and hit enter. And it will give me the average, not including the errors that I have or the hidden rows that I have as well. And I can do the same thing with an aggregate for sum. And again, I'm going to ignore the hidden rows and errors and I'll use the same range. The large and small are aggregate array functions. So I'm going to start the same way, and anything from 14 down to 19 are array functions. So for the first one, I'm going to use large. Large is similar to max, but max will only find the highest number of a range, and with large, I might want to find the second highest. So I'll use large. I'm going to ignore the hidden rows and errors again. I'm going to apply it to the same range, which will be my array in this case. And then the K option also needs to be identified. Do I want to find the top largest number or the second, third, fourth largest? This is where I'll identify that. I'd like to see the second largest. So I'll type a two. And when I hit enter, I'll see that the second largest number of that range is listed. And again, same thing with the small. That's an aggregate function. It is an array aggregate function. I'm going to ignore the hidden rows and errors. I'll apply to the same range. And maybe I want to find the second smallest and this will identify the second smallest price that I have. And those are examples of using the aggregate function in Excel 2010.